people i'm back again now we know making it at any level at any club um, like i said at any level from premier league to essentially semi-pro is is tough um there's many reasons why players don't make it some don't get seen some where if you live in a place like london you might have ability but it's a melting pot so the chances of being seen are very slim because there's so many um people um some people don't have contacts to get trials some people do that's why you see a lot of mediocre players make it as footballers some people have injuries some people don't have the right advisors or agents that can make moves happen for them there's many a reason as to why young players don't reach potential or players that you thought would have a career in the game don't it's not always necessarily black and white obviously there's injuries and there could possibly be attitude problems generally speaking none apply to as far as my knowledge to players that i'm about to speak at but a couple of players where um i did a couple in the list here i did think could have top careers when i say top careers i'm not saying champions league world beaters but good careers i did it did shock me that some aren't actually playing at a high standard and things like that so we might as well crack on obviously i'm speaking in regards to arsenal youngsters or people that have been there at a time the first one would be and making sure i get his name right here alfred mogabo um rwandan international so much so he played he, he actually made his national team debut before he actually played for the club at any level i mean at first team level which he failed to do He's someone that even Jack Wilshere tipped to go to the top and said we should keep tabs on. Um, as a 14, 15 year old or whatever, he went to the, 20, what was it? I don't even remember the year. I think it was 2014, 2013. He went to the under-17s World Cup where Sterling and that were. So he's someone that's spoken about of having potential. And if he didn't make it here, you'd think he'd have a career. Didn't work out for him at Arsenal. I believe he had a trial at Sheffield United. And then I saw him floating at many a clubs. I saw him playing, I don't know the team's name, but in the Camden Sunday League. Um, at the time, um, he was at Dulwich Hamlet, I believe, Enfield Town, what other clubs? Canvey Island, Met Metropolitan Police or Met Police, Braintree. These are all quite good semi pro teams, but for all this, the potential he had, it is, it's, it's quite sad to be fair, man. And he's, what, 22 years of age, probably now, still young enough to get back in the footballing circuit, but. I can't tell you what club he's currently at, and it's a shame, man. Um, for someone that was rated highly by Liam Brady and the rest of the Arsenal coaching staff and Jack Wilshere himself, I mean, Jack Wilshere rated Dan Crowley as well. It don't really look good. But, um, yeah, it's sad, man. The second one would be Christopher Olsen. Now, I rated him. I remember when he was in Arsenal's academy, he did a couple night campaigns about this is his season, this is the time. I felt while he might be lacking physically, and that's in my opinion, that's probably why he didn't make it. I don't feel he was physical enough. I'm not saying he had to be a brute, but I don't feel he was physical enough to probably last playing for Arsenal in the top six side. But what he lacked in, in physical attributes, he had one he was a wonderful technician. Set pieces, free kicks, link up play, dribbling, balance, everything you look for in an Arsenal player or why we scout these sort of creative midfielder players. He had that. Just probably failed to kick on and yeah, it did it didn't happen for him. He's, I believe he's twenty three years of age now. He's what? He, he's playing for AEK in his homeland, um, formerly playing for Micheland, I believe. Um, so yeah, at least he got to make his debut for Arsenal, scoring in the Carling Cup um, against West Brom, where Bellerin made his debut. But yeah, man, it's sad for someone that was that went on the pre-season tour um, a couple of years back when we played Indonesia's national team was seen as having a future, if not at Arsenal, at a, at a top level, similar to Seb Larsen to a degree, his countryman. But yeah, this is a man who, from the ages of 13 to 16, obviously ended up at Arsenal, but from the ages of 13 to 16, was heavily watched by Ajax. I believe Chelsea offered him a trial. He trialed a couple times at Arsenal. The big clubs were interested in him, as they are, as they all are when you're deep, when you're this age. So yeah, man, to see that while he's went on tour and he's obviously, um, uh, did he take a penalty in the shootout win against West Brom? I'm not too sure, but he might have. So you could say that's a career highlight, but it didn't happen for him. It's nice to see he's playing at a decent level. Um, what was it last year? He was playing at the under 21s championship um, for Sweden. So yeah, man, uh, the next step for him is trying to kick on to Swedish national team. No disrespect to his newly joined club in AEK, but join a more reputable league. I do think the Spanish game, would, whether that's in C um, whether oh, that's a Serie A, whether that's in La Liga or the second division, obviously when we be playing in La Liga, they'll suit him a bit more. Um, then you've got Reese Charles Cook. I believe he was a decent. He's a decent keeper. Obviously, at the time he was there, there was, there was a lot of keepers on the books now, but there was a lot of keepers on Arsenal's books. So 
Um, it, it was always tough. He's 24 years of age. He left us. I believe he went, I'm not too sure he could have actually went back to Charlton where he spent a time as a youth player. I know his brother was there at, at a time. Um, he went to Coventry, played around 50 odd times for Coventry allegedly, coupled loan spells and then he played for Swindon Town and he, he's playing to, he played at a decent level and I've seen now he's joined the Danish first division side as well so that's bound to be an experience for him. I mean, he's 24 years of age he's, and, and he's gone to live in Denmark now. I mean, when he looks back at, at, at his professional career, that could be a highlight. It's a new experience and that will make him grow as a person away from football because it will help him. But learn a new language, new way of life, new cuisine, new sorts of people. Because even if you look at it's completely different. But look at Arsene Wenger. He said a big ray of how he was shaped in terms of dealing with emotion was, was Japan. Because I remember reading the segment and I'm paraphrasing it. I can't remember it like for like. But in a nutshell... He was saying in Japan, they frown at you at the time again, and I can't verify this, but he's like, they frown at you for showing emotions. He was like in his younger days as a manager. Obviously, he still shows emotion now, but he was more volatile. He was more shouting and animated, and he let things get to him. He said in the society he was in at the time, Japanese people looked down at that, and that helped him. And you can see how that helped him because... Um, I know I know Wenger wasn't the manager he previously was when he came to England, but being a hallmark in football, doing what he's done to hear people similar to myself who have never done anything in football on your level say you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that, it would get to you regardless of if there's truth in it or not. So that probably helped him. And obviously he's named Drag Through the Mud Beer Time. So yeah, nice to see. Probably one that's upsetting for me as well because I believe he had potential is Zach Ansar. Um, if that name sounds familiar, if you remember his, his father, used to be on Wayne Rooney Street Striker, unbelievable techers. I felt Zach, Zach Ansar had it all to be fair. Again, I'm not here to say he would have been a world beat up, but he had pace, he had good movement, he could score goals, he could play a couple of positions. And yeah, man, he was one of them you're looking at as... He, it's a thing where if he's he looked like he at one point he could be given opportunities and it's just down to him to take them. I know he was on the bench in the Champions League, but he never came on. That was bound to be a good experience. Yeah, it was a good playoff for me. The only reason he's probably not at a football league side is injuries. He's been shagged with injuries. He's been robbed of a lot of playing time through injuries. And I'm not a physio, but I don't know the effect that that's had on his body. I don't know if his agent, if he still has one, is touting him to clubs and they're looking at that as a as a bit of a because mm, yeah. After leaving Arsenal, he went to Charlton, didn't really work out at Charlton, spent time at a couple of lower league sides. I do believe he's currently at, I cannot say his name, Hyfe Town, semi-professional and he's banging goals. So for me, hopefully Zach's out there staying positive because I do believe if he, he's only 24, if he carries it on, if he gets back scoring goals, gets his name buzzing again, I do believe he could be back on the circuit playing football, man. It's a shame that he's not. Um, I did see, I do watch SE Dons on on YouTube and they do speak about him a lot and I think he's actually made his debut. I don't think he plays for them anymore. But yeah, it's a far cry from Arsenal. So yeah, these are players where I just thought if they're not going to make it at Arsenal, they could have good careers and I ain't really panned out for none of them. If I mean, looking at all of them, you could probably, if I had to look at it, I'd probably say the most successful at this current moment in time is probably Reese Charles. No, it's not Reese Charles Cook. It's probably, it's, it's obviously Olsen because he's playing at the highest of levels out of all of them. But other than that, it's, I'd say it's Reese Cook because getting released from a club is hard and he's managed to stay at a club for a while. You can, I could bring up, I don't want to name drop because it's deep, but there's many of young players or players that are around the same ages as the names I've said now that you look at their record, they're constantly trialling at clubs. One year, they'll spend a year here. Next year, they're released from that same contract. They'll go and trial at this club, get a contract there. And there's no stability. There's no real chance of making it as a footballer. They're just literally... And I can't blame them. They're doing what they need to do and trying to get professional clubs because being a free agent is long, it's tough. It's essentially unemployed. And you're then having to keep yourself fit, pay out, the note, pay out your own pocket to keep yourself fit, to get physios possibly find a club to train at and play football and keep playing it's a tough arcs man it's, it's a real tough arcs man it's, it's a tough arcs and this just shows you getting a, this is what i was saying all my vids getting a scholarship is just the beginning because many of these players that we rate at 15 16 and you get to 20 it's nothing everyone's got potential at 15 16 potential is overrated like potential potential is nothing potential is just a it's just a it's just a it's just a it's just something in your pocket like it can be robbed it can be it can be robbed a footballer's career is not linear because if it was linear there's many a player that would be held in high regard by ourselves um for all their ability and equally there's players with hardly any ability that have gone on to have good careers there's not one reason for why someone has succeeded or failed but you get the point 
people on that note there ain't nothing for me else to add to this i ain't gonna ramble no more guys deluded if you wish get in the comments subscribe and do the rest like the vid share it up for me bit by bit brick by brick at a time rome is being built built and dg's taking over and i can't do it without you look we're all coming we're all taking over man it's our time dg i'm out